Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, and watching. I do appreciate it. Hope your day's going really well. I sound terrible. Sorry, I'm fighting some stuff. Uh, lots of cedar in the air in Austin this time of year, and it's getting to me. Even though I take a lot of precautions, I sound like crap. So my apologies. Regardless, hopefully uh, the content in this video will be helpful to you. And in this video, I'll be talking about LUTs, and I'll be talking about looks. And specifically, I'll be talking about how are they similar, how are they different, when do you use one versus the other, that sort of thing. Because I get that question fairly often um, where people have asked me about that, and uh, that's usually an indication that I should make a video about it. So here I am. By the way, if you haven't yet subscribed, please do. I would really appreciate that. Hit that thumbs up uh, as well if you like the video. That helps YouTube know that you appreciate the stuff that I'm putting out, and uh, I'd appreciate that. And let's get into it. So I've got a photo here. Um, I, I did crop it already, did a little bit of lens and geometry stuff, so, you know, that sort of thing, plus the crop. Uh, but I'm going to use a LUT and a look on here, and I'm going to talk about the differences between them. I'm going to start with LUTs, because I think those are probably the things that people are least familiar with. So a LUT is a lookup table. It's an acronym for lookup table, which basically all it is, it's kind of like a math equation that basically says, if you have this color, turn it into that color. Uh, that sort of thing. So it's basically transforming colors and tones in an image. And that's what a LUT does. Now a LUT has historically been used in cinema or in filmmaking, right? And what it does is you see films and they have certain really interesting or cool color looks to them. That's probably a LUT being applied to their footage. And so now with Luminar and Photoshop and I think Affinity and certainly On One and places like that, you can also use LUTs in photographs, which is super fun. And I have to admit, so this came out in Luminar 3, uh, but I have to admit in the beginning, I was kind of like, you know, I don't feel like I can do as much with a LUT as I can with a preset or a look. So I didn't really get into it, but now I'm starting to get into it more. And the truth is you can't really do quite as much. So the differences are that LUTs will basically transform the colors or the tones based on a preset value that's built Ooh, preset was the wrong word there, wasn't it? Um, based on a predetermined value. Um, and so LUTs are create, created in other applications, and basically they just map colors from one to another. So it works on color and tone. The difference between that and a look, if I'm gonna go over here and talk about looks, looks will also change colors and tones, as you probably know, but a look will also be able to contain things like detail enhancement and sharpening, exposure changes, a vignette, a new sky, a texture, things like that. So technically, if you will, a look can contain more stuff than a LUT. It doesn't mean a LUT's not good. In fact, LUTs are very cool and I've gotten really into them. Um, so let's take a look at it on this photo. I'm going to start with a LUT. So you go over here to the Creative Styles or the Creative tab and go to Color Styles and choose LUT. Now, um, there are quite a few LUTs that are built into it, and I tend to think of LUTs as being something you would use for like film emulation, um, you know, like an old film photograph, um, cinematic kind of looks, matte looks, things like that. And so there are a number of them built in. You can also download new LUT files. That will take you to the Luminar Marketplace where you can purchase those. I also recommend you look around on the web. There are a lot of people that either give away or sell LUTs. So just give a look around and see what you find there or you can load a custom LUT file. So if you already have LUTs, you can stick them in there. So I have LUTs I save on my desktop. So I just click on that, and I've got this uh, pack of LUTs here. I've got a number of packs of LUTs, but I'll use this one here in a minute. So you can load custom LUTs once you get them from another place. Uh, so the way it works, you just click Choose LUT. When you come over here, you can see as you hover over it, it it'll sh give you a preview, basically, of what that LUT will look like on your photo. And so I kind of like this San Diego. Uh, and then once you apply it, you can see you have amount, contrast, and saturation. Now, here's the thing. Um, as you drag these, it defaults to 30 on the amount. Um, so just give some consideration to moving these sliders around, depending on the image. And that's the thing. I really feel like every image is going to be different, and every LUT is going to be different, of course. And if you need to, you can mask them in. Here's the thing, um, if you're going to use a LUT, I generally recommend that you go do your basic edits to your photo first and then come look at LUTs because I feel like um, most every image is going to require some basic stuff. Maybe you need to go over here to AI Enhance and need to do some AI Accent or maybe you need to go into the light and change some of the temperature or the smart contrast. I'm just kind of making this up here. But um, if I go and turn off the LUT, 
you can see I sort of developed the base photo and then this color style or this LUT that I applied stuck that interesting look of color tones, if you will, on the image. And so that's something that you can do. Um, here's the thing with LUTs. LUTs are made in a different, um, in different programs and they generally come in a .cube file, C-U-B-E. The thing about LUTs is they're transferable. A cube file will work uh, as a LUT for you in uh, Luminar, of course, but also probably in Affinity, in Photoshop. I say probably in Affinity because I think they use LUTs, but I've never used an uh, Affinity Photo. Um, Photoshop will accept cube LUTs um, on one photo. So LUTs are transferable from app to app to app, whereas presets or looks are specific to the application that they're built in. So that's a major difference between the two. Also, as you saw, I did some uh, basic stuff in the light filter and then applied this LUT here. One more time, there's the before and the after. So you can go and play with other edits after you've added a LUT to your photo. So let's go into that. I'm gonna hit reset, image, adjustment, reset adjustments. And I just realized I reset my crop and my lens and geometry stuff too, but that's okay. We're all friends here. You're gonna not worry about that. So here's the thing. If you go add a look to your photo, so click on looks and I've, I'm in this uh, Luminar looks uh, user. I've, I've been making some, I'm just kind of playing around. If I stick that on there, it'll apply that across my photo. Now, if I go over here and have a look at it, you can see based on the things that are highlighted, everything that was included in this look. Now, it doesn't look particularly great here, but that's okay. Um, I've got light, I've got AI enhance, AI structure, color, and then over here, I've got some dramatic. So you can include more things in a look than you can a LUT, like I said. But having applied that look to the photo, I can now go get the LUT filter and say choose LUT and go get that same one, I think it was San Diego, and stick it on there, increase the amount, maybe the saturation, uh, maybe take down the contrast a little bit, and it's fairly significantly changed the look of my look. Boy, is that getting confusing or what? But that's the, I think one of the points here with LUTs is they can be used in combination with a look or they could actually be included in a look. And I think they can enhance the, uh, the output or the, the final result that you get um, if you start with a look or preset and add a LUT to it. So I think they work really well in tandem. However, if you, let me hit reset again, image adjustment reset. If you come and add this LUT, here we go, San Diego again. I'm gonna punch up the color, a little bit of contrast, maybe take down the saturation. If, um, if I've done that to my photo and then say, gosh, I really wanna get a look and put on there. If I go choose a look, the look is gonna override the LUT. So the LUT has now been removed because it was not a component of that look. So if you have a LUT on your photo already and you wanna apply a look, add a new layer first. So you would go up here and you would say plus add new adjustment layer and then add the look because that's another difference is that you can apply the LUT anytime while you're editing, but if you apply a look, it's gonna overwrite anything you've done on that layer. So always add a look on a new layer if you've done some adjustments prior to using the look. Now I'm gonna reset this photo again and I'm gonna go over here and I'm just gonna build a, a look real quick. So I'm gonna say, I wanna cool that off a little bit, maybe take up some contrast, pull down the highlights, maybe lift the shadows a ton. How about a little AI enhance? We'll do a little bit of that. How about a little AI structure as well? I'll say plus on that. Um, and I think I'll take a vignette and I'm gonna drag this vignette here. Uh, something like that and a little inner light and maybe choose subject, put a little bit over here on that couple. And there we go. I've just built um, a group of adjustments that I want to save as a look. So I go to looks and I can say save new look and I'm going to call this demo look, right? And I'm going to hit save. And now you can see down below I've got this demo look so I can do other things with it if I want. I can rename it. I can export it to share with my friends. I can also update current settings. So I'm gonna close looks, and now I've got this look I just built. I'm gonna to go to creative, I'm gonna to go to LUTs, I'm gonna choose a LUT, I'm gonna get a custom LUT file, and I'm gonna get this street cool that I got somewhere. It might have been on the um, Luminar Marketplace, I'm not sure, but I've got this street cool LUT that I kinda like, and I've just added that to my look that I built. Remember this look is here, and adding a LUT to it does not impact the look. The reverse is true if you're on the same layer, as I said a moment ago. So I've got my look applied. You can see all those filters are there. 
I came over here, I stuck a LUT on there. Let me show you the before. That was just the look on the photo. And after, that's with the LUT on it. Well, hey, Jim decides he really likes this. I wanna update that look. So I'm gonna go over here to demo look, and I'm gonna say update with current settings. This will overwrite demo look, and do you wanna continue? You bet I do, say yes. And now, so I'm gonna click off, I'm gonna choose this other look, just so it'll reset everything. There we go, that looks terrible. Now I'm gonna go back to demo look, and close the looks menu, and you can see that street cool LUT is saved in there as part of this look. Here's the rest of it, which were these filters on the first tab, essentials. So that's a cool thing that you can do, I think, which is you can use looks to your heart's content, stacking them layer after layer if you'd like to. You can include LUTs within looks. You cannot do it the other way around. A look is not gonna be a component of a LUT. A LUT you can think of as like a, a filter, which is over here, that has some color and tone adjustments in it. And it'll do wonderful things on your photos and give you a lot of creative flexibility. Uh, but I feel like a LUT is very rarely ever going to stand on its own as an edit to a photo. I feel like you're always going to have to go do other things, and that's because LUTs contain tone and color adjustments, but they're not going to allow you to do um, you know, details and sharpening and exposure and vignette and new skies or textures or whatever. Whereas a look could theoretically be a one-click edit to a photo. Um, I say theoretically because my opinion is with looks, even if some people position them as one click and you're done. Um, I do that sometimes, but there, most times I will add a look to a photo and then I'll go through and further refine it. And I may actually add a LUT to it as well, just because it can help enhance the overall look. So I hope that helps with looks and LUTs. LUTs, tone and color. Looks, tone, color, exposure, detail, sharpening, vignette, new sky, texture, whatever. More stuff in a look than a LUT, but a LUT is very powerful, very interesting, and you can get some really cool uh, results out of that, and they work really well, I think, in combination. Also, don't forget that LUTs are transferable. These cube files will work in other apps that support LUTs. Um, looks that you build in Luminar are only gonna work in Luminar. So hopefully that helps. We talked about how they're similar, how they're different, kind of defined what each one is, and also um, showed how I use them, and in fact, how I may use them in combination to edit my photos. I'm gonna go get some warm tea for my throat. I do appreciate you watching, my friends. Please do like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. I'll be talking to you real soon. Uh, thanks again for watching. Have a great day. Take care. I'll see you later, and adios.